Welcome to Auto Shop Showcase with Gary Gunn. Today's guest is Doug Wick. Hey, folks, thanks for tuning in, man. We, this is Showcase in Gary Gunn. I've got a great uh, interview for today, and the interview is with a friend of mine, Doug Wick. We've known each other over 20 years. We've only seen each other one time in person, and we go back to our EMIS days when we were both EMIS certified coaches. If you heard me talk about EMIS for the last 24 years, well, this is a gentleman has a story that I wanted to capture. And Doug, I have a, a question here that kind of start this off a little bit. And we walk through this cancer situation together. You had the cancer. Can you relay that, that cancer story in a couple of minutes? I know it takes longer than that. What, what is it with the cancer? What did you find out through your journey? Yeah, well, um, you know, there are, um, it, it probably reassured me of the supernatural and God, you know, for sure. Um, when I entered uh, the hospital in Feb on February of uh, 2012, 84% of my bone marrow was cancerous. They found out the very first week that I had uh, anywhere from a zero to a 3% chance of survival because I had something called monosomy seven, which was a rare form of acute myeloid leukemia. And um, in order to get uh, a cure for uh, acute myeloid leukemia, which was gonna be more difficult because of the monosomy seven, you have to get, uh, the, you, the only cure is a bone marrow transplant and you have to um, get your bone marrow down to less than 10% cancerous. Well, okay. you know, 84% when I entered, after five chemos, it wasn't less than 42%. And so they said, we really don't have any other options, Doug, um, you know, um, except for maybe a clinical trial. Um, I had a doctor tell me, um, go home, spend the time I have remaining with my family uh, rather than go through a, the clinical trial. And as it turned out, I decided, because I was confident that there was a solution to this and I I think I mentioned I was meditating almost immediately when I got into the hospital. I read a book that my friend suggested to me called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Uh, it it uh, spiritually connected to a lot of my thoughts, um, my Christian beliefs, um, uh, particularly, um, you know, the the idea that there's a, uh, someone greater than us that loves us more than we love ourselves. And that if you put your trust in that, uh, and and you do the work to change, you can get a different <laughs> different outcome than what these people were predicting. So when I went back into the the hospital, I was meditating. I honestly changed some things about my meditation so that I was feeling as if I was um, already cured. I would come out of those meditations literally crying because I was so happy, and um, I you know I've. I don't know if we have time for this, but what happened about three or four days after that, after a particularly rough day, I was sitting up in my bed after the doctors who had been bothering me all day uh, with, because uh, I had pneumonia at the time. Um, I, I had my computer on my, uh, my uh, bed on my knees or lap. And um, a, a, the computer acted as if it got hit by lightning or yeah. electrical shock the screen turned to snow and two words came in on the screen in like blue letters that said cancer cured and i'm I, you know oh. and yeah and i was like Is this this happening and then, and then immediately gary the screen just went back to normal then okay and i'm going did i see that or not i tried to type it in some notes and I'm, almost 30 to 45 minutes later they pulled me into the to the um ER, the emergency room, because my, my pneumonia was worse. And uh, the, I have to tell you that I had a lot of confidence when I was in the emergency room. I don't know if they did, but I only was in there for 12 hours. I came out. I got better. We did go through the clinical trial. And about three or four weeks later, I hadn't told anybody about this, what happened, because I, you know, yeah. I wasn't quite sure of it myself and and I'm I'm sitting out on my back porch. They after they did the biopsy, they said, Doug, you've got two or three days, you know, before we get the results. Go home, relax, you know, nothing you can do. 
So I get a call at about 945 at night on a warm, hot July day. And it's my doctor. And he says, Doug, I don't normally call my patients this late at night, but I don't normally have this good news. Your biopsy came back and he says, there's absolutely no trace of cancer in your, uh, in your bone marrow. So I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps all over me. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I, uh, it, uh, I'm doing a good job not crying myself because it was uh, you know, miraculous. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, man, Doug, thanks for sharing that. Doug's got a lot more going on. He, he has a book he's creating also. So down the road, you hear back from us and we'll say this is if you want more of Doug's story. Here is a book that you can buy. I know he's been creating it and writing it. So I'm going to close down this segment and we'll be right back with another question and, and keep moving with of all that knowledge Doug Gwick has in his brain. We're going to pluck it today. Thank you so much. We'll be back. All right, we're in segment number two. I don't know how many segments we're going to have, but uh, hopefully this one is worth watching and listening to over and over and over again. So, Doug, you talked about a, a 95%, kind of a 95% rule. We've always heard the 80-20 rule, but you threw a new one at me this morning. It's the 95% rule. So expand on that so all the listeners and all these automotive operators and managers and owners can kind of connect some dots here for us. So, Doug, you're on. Yeah, so the the problem with most of us is that we're um, we're living in the past, and what that means is that every day when we get up, ninety five percent of our thoughts are the exact same thoughts we had yesterday. You know, the get up on the same side of the bed, go to the bathroom, let the dog out, get your coffee, whatever it is, you're doing the same things, the same things every day, and that's that ninety five percent is. Um, if you're 35 or older, and I'm assuming most of our listeners would probably be 35 or older. The other thing about that is about 75 to 80% of those are negative. That's, that's another negative. You say negative. negative. Yeah. Negative. Okay. Thoughts. So, so if we're thinking the same thoughts <laughs> every day, what's going to happen? We have the same thoughts. They produce the same feelings and that comes back and produces the same thoughts. In fact, our, our system is such that when we get a feeling, the bra- it, it shoots the, that, that message up to the brain, and the brain says, am I angry? It, you know, with, with the feeling, I'm angry. And the brain says, yeah, you're damn right I'm angry. You know? And we just keep, you know, you, you, you can, you can uh, somebody's going through a divorce, that's what they're hearing. They're, they're getting, and they're winding themselves up, and they're getting into this high beta, and you can't change in that. If you keep thinking the same thoughts, you're not going to, you're going to produce the same feeling, which is going to produce the same thoughts and, and so forth. So you not, you need new thoughts, which means we're going to have new choices. You're going to take new actions. Those new actions are going to experience, are, are going to produce different experiences, which produce different feelings, which then feed the brain with additional through thought, new thoughts. And that's how we change. That's the only way to change. Uh. Because because we get stuck in living the same day over and over and over, and it's it's uh it's like we're in a on a hamster wheel, and we're expecting things yeah. to change. They can't without process. Yeah, there are a couple of cliches that we've always heard, Doug. And if you always do what you always do, and you always get what you've always got, yep. is that what you're talking about here? That's exactly what it is. I mean, the definition of insanity, right? You keep doing the same yeah. thing. What are you going to get? The same thing you always got. And and that was, I think, uh, true from Michael Gerber. And I think that I think that most people don't think they have necessarily control of their thoughts, but they do. Okay. As we talked about that idea of you, you get a thought and it's not a thought you want. You just go change or stop it. You know, just stop that thought and think a different yeah. thought. You know? And and but okay. but most people, we are caught in this trap and. One of the things that Dispenza talks about when you're meditating is that if you have a thought and you're distracted, that's not necessarily a bad thing as long as you are aware of it and bring you back. That's the other piece of this with change. We, we are unaware of our unconscious thoughts. And so the first step really to change 
is to become aware of what your unconscious is telling you because you know you can have a thought but it doesn't necessarily be true you know and and we are programmed why because of how we were your um what would i call it you know as a neanderthal or whatever you want to call it you know when we were that we were uh, in caves or whatever we are programmed to think the worst case scenario and mm. if we do that we're 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 programming ourselves to think the worst is going to happen why because if we can prepare for the worst and that doesn't happen we have a better chance of survival so we've got to get out of that cuz you know imagine myself being in in the uh, the hospital the first week or so and they said hey you got monosomy 7 you got a 0 to 3% chance of fear can just take you over and now you're oh, thinking yeah. what's the worst case scenario rather than thinking of possibilities that's what we need to change and that's what new thoughts do is they get us to think about possibilities wow thanks for sharing that Doug i know that's just one layer of the onion yeah. there's a lot of layers to peel off here <laughs> And we're not going to go any deeper into that right now. That was segment number two. We're going to come back in just a few minutes with uh, another question for this astute gentleman named Doug Wick. And a great friend of mine has a lot to share. And I want you guys and gals to hear what he's saying. Well, that helps us get, get you to where you want to go. Congratulations, folks. You've made it through segment one, segment two, and now we're in segment three. And, Doug, would you hold up your cup there? You were holding over. Hey, for the Packers. Doug is a big Packer fan. He even owns part of the Packers. Now, I think it's it just on paper. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's a little more information about Doug Wick that you would like to know. And so if you're a Packer fan, maybe you've got <clears> a connection <throat> with Doug. If you're, you're a Packer hater, well, anyway, Doug's a good guy, and you can just go with it. That's okay. We can't all root for the same team. Yeah. But something happened the other day that you and I were talking back in uh, July, Doug, yeah. and, and you mentioned something I thought was so powerful. It says, don't predict your solution. Your job is design it, not create it. So let me repeat that again. Don't predict your solution. Your job is to design it not create it. Now, if you would tie this thought into what these automotive owners, leaders, managers, and how does that, what, what would, what would, what would help them understand that thought and put it in place? Yeah. And I think, I think we're, we're talking about um, the, um, the idea that again, we're, we're, if we're, we, as humans, we're trying to be in control. We're trying to predict our future. And so we're always thinking in that mode. And the reality is that if we're in creation mode, that is not the time to predict. Because if you're predicting, you're in the old familiar self. So when you're when you're trying to figure out what's going to happen here if you lose an employee or whatever it is, that's actually getting in your way. You're actually in uh, okay. that high beta state where you aren't going to get, you're not allowing the universe, God, um, you know, universal power, whatever you want to call it, to work with you. Let, let that part of the solution go design it. What do I, you know, ask those questions. If, if it is an employee, what, what, you know, do an exit interview. Why, why are you leaving? What could I have done better? What, you know, what did you not like about working here? What could we have done in terms of benefits or whatever? So you can design maybe that next job to hold that person. And sometimes, you know, it rarely happens, but sometimes those people that leave realize, you know, the grass wasn't greener on the other side and they come back and they're even better employees than you've had. And that that is really yeah. a situation where uh, talk about creation and, you know, the unexpected happening. We we talk about this all that you you have to allow for the unknown. The unknown is where our um, the generous present moment, not predicting your future, okay. is where creation happens. And so um, the, the the problem is when you're when you're trying to predict and trying to control, you're really kind of freezing the whole situation up. And preventing okay. 
a better solution from occurring. Because just get into creative mode. Ask yourself, what could I have done better? What could I have done differently? What talk to the person or the you know the, the complaint or the person who's leaving? Get answers to those questions and then design something that you feel is going to get a better result. Maybe maybe it's got to be tweaked, but you're going to be able to come out with something and you'll be surprised at the synchronicities that occur when you allow the universe to give you your solution. Yeah. I don't know. I'll bet I'll bet any money you and everybody else out there that's listening has had situations where <clears throat> that it was like where did this come from? What how, how did you know they they met somebody you thought about somebody and they called you. You you were looking for a solution for something, you let it go and it came to you unexpectedly. Yeah. That's that's the universe working in your favor to um, to get you the outcomes you want, the results you want. So, yeah, and it's sort of like uh, let you know, let God be God, let go. Yeah, and and, 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 and and let Him supply that that inner thinking and feelings to to give you the uh, to how to create it. Yeah, I've, I've read. He's, he's called the Creator for something, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and we and honestly, we are we all are creators. God gave us, imbued us with that creation. But when we're trying to manipulate things, it's like it's like if you're worrying about something, you you God's out of the picture. You know, the creator is out okay. of the picture at that point because you're trying to manipulate it. You're trying to create your outcome. So if you can let go yeah. of that, like we talked about, uh, I think you said July 29th when we talked on the phone. It was. Right. I have these. I have these thoughts, and they're negative thoughts. They're. Uh, oh, I can't get anybody to work for me. I can't. What you need to do is go. Stop. Stop that thought. Yeah. And, 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 and what? What's a different thought? What's a more productive thought than that? But ask yourself, how could I reframe that so I wouldn't be saying, I can't. Well, you know, it could be. There. There's. There's a lot of people. Maybe I have to up. Up my. Uh, my pay, maybe I have to up my benefits, whatever it is, you know, but ask yourself yeah. those questions rather than saying, I can't do it. That's what you've got to do. Yeah. Oh, great stuff, Doug, man. I, you are so powerful in this, in this. Sometimes I read your blogs and I read things and, and the one that, and I look at it and think, wow, where did Doug come with all this stuff? So I guess what you're doing is you're just saying, okay, I want to, I, I want to, uh, create you know to to design this blog and then you just relax and that 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 creation begins because it's yeah. built inside of you you mentioned it a while ago that god created that in us and yep. we just got to tap into it right yeah and when, when when i'm stressed and on a deadline boy the the uh um, the blog oh. doesn't yeah doesn't come as easily as it does when i doesn't come out relaxed and i you know i'm i'm working on one two weeks ahead i'm I'm much more um, creative and uh, allowing it to to inspire me. The you know the creation mode to re inspire me. Yeah, you bet. So all right, now that's segment three. Now segment four is going to be our final one for today, and I'm going to post some things to Doug about what you guys run into at the automotive shop level, and some of those thoughts where we need to use that stop. Stop thinking that way. Stop thinking yeah. that way. And so we'll just we'll ran, we'll ran robin this one and see what comes out. So don't leave. Keep listening. If this is where the gravy gets put on the potatoes. So we'll be back. Best. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now this is kind of off the cuff, guys. This is something. None of this has been rehearsed. So whatever Doug comes up with, I guess you can say, "Hey, that was great. That was a great thing," or just discount it. Whatever you think. And the questions I asked might not even be important to you, but they might be important to somebody else. So here it goes. So if you, if, and I talked to a shop owner the other day, Doug, that said, I can't find technicians. Every one of them that come to work for me are dumb and they're not motivated. And they don't want to work. Yeah. So what's the solution to that? Well, the, the, his mindset is uh, unfortunately probably, I mean, that's uh, evidence has proved to him that uh, that's, the case for him but it's but yeah. if that were true then everybody would have the same problem wouldn't they so yeah. that would tell me that would tell me that the problem is in here 
That's what he. So believes. it's in the owners. It's in the uh, owners' brain. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to be um, disrespectful for, to him, but you know, I know <laughs> that if I hadn't said I'm responsible for getting cancer, I don't think I would have got. I wouldn't have gotten a cure for cancer. And okay, unless un, unless and until he realizes I'm the problem, I'm thinking this way. That's why this is occurring. I have to change my thoughts because. When he changes his thoughts, the world will change. We keep thinking, oh, the world's got to change. The world, if, if, if only they would do this, if only they would do that. That's not the, that's not the issue. It's us. We, we need to change our thoughts, our feelings, our behaviors. And when we do that, the world will change to us. And that's, okay. that's really hard, I think, for somebody to... Yeah, first of all, they don't want to admit that it's their problem. I, yeah, I, you yeah. Know, most of us don't. We, we're, we're, we're blame people. We tend to, you know, and that. Oh, it's the technician's know. fault. He he doesn't. He wasn't who he was, and he didn't yep. bring the technical skills. He didn't. He, he fooled me in the interview. You know, all yeah. those things start happening. Yeah, and if he fooled so, you, if he fooled you in the interview, that's your right. That's, that's your, your fault. Yeah. 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 I always tell the customer, I tell the shop owner, say, just pick up a mirror and look in the mirror. Yep. If you can't hire the right people, it's not their problem. It's yours. Yep. yep. You're yours. making that. You made the decision. Yeah. Who hired them? You did. You know, I, 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 uh, interesting. Uh, I had uh, my water heater exploded and they put somebody, either the plumber or the people that came in to f uh, mitigate it, there's a big gouge on my uh, steps on the way down. And it, it was uh, interesting when I said, hey, I noticed this. Uh, do you know who did this? And immediately the people from the company that, was the, that were doing the mediation said, well, we didn't do that. Our equipment would never do that. <laughs> how would they know? I mean, how, you know, and, and then he even said later today when I asked him again, he said, the plumber did it. I saw the plumber do it. Describe oh. that to me, but I, you know, and I don't know who did it. I don't necessarily care, but that that's the kind of thing that happens with people. Is no, I need to take a call here. Be right back. Okay. All right. Well, that's normal in the life of anybody. The phone rings. You need to take it. So I put this on hold. So Doug, we're back with these thoughts. Yep. Now, yep. another one we hear is that my people won't do what I want them to do. They won't follow the process. They they just refuse. They Say they're going to do it, but they don't do it. Yeah. So how do I change my mindset on accountability? How, how, what do I have to do to change in order to facilitate accountability? Well, I w again, I'd say that's – if you have a standard, then um, it's your job to uphold that standard. And when they aren't doing it, um, then – it's your job to come down on them. And if, if they continue to refuse to follow the process, you have a, you have a choice to, uh, you know, keep them and have them perform poorly or free up their future, as we call it, you know? Yeah, take them to lunch and buy theirs to go, yeah. basically. Yeah. And a there good friend go. of mine, Richard Flint, tells it this way. He says, what you don't confront, you validate. Yes, yeah. So if you see something going on and they're not doing what what is best for the customer or best for the business, then if you don't confront it, you say, hey, it's okay. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly wow. right. Yep. Yeah. And 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 so that's a that's a uh, that's a discipline a business owner needs. He needs to be aware and not not go the easy route of going, oh, I'll, you know, I'll get to it later. I'll do later. You got yeah, to get to it later. Yeah. 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 I'm too damn busy to take care of that right now. Um, that's the most important thing because you get, you get consistent performance, people following your process, the way it should be, you're going to have a uh, very, very good business. You know, a business is accelerating in growth. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. your, that's your responsibility. Make them follow the process. Make sure they know what it is. Because sometimes it's, you haven't taught them. You haven't trained them. You know? That's right. Yeah. Is so. it my fault they are not following the process? And I say, absolutely, it's your fault. Yeah. 
because you're yeah. allowing them not to. Yep. It's exactly. not that they don't want to. You're just allowing it to happen. Exactly. Same on you. Yep. Okay. Get that mirror yep. and you look at it and you say, it's me. Yeah. Take accountability. And I think you did that through your cancer. You took accountability for that. You told me a story a minute ago, I think this, and we'll end on this, about if you choose to walk down the road and a car runs over you, well, who's accountable for that? The guy driving the car or you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, in my case, I believe I am accountable because I was walking on the sidewalk. I, you know, I didn't have That's to. Right. Be there. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know that yeah. probably sounds silly to somebody, but, but in actuality, if I chose to be there that day, that was my decision. And That's just right. so happened that some numbskull was uh, driving crazy, but I'm, I'm responsible. And, and the beauty of that to me is always that when we take responsibility, that, that really, because blaming others, it's just like trying to forgive somebody. You, you have to accept that I'm responsible because most times what we're doing is we're, we're trying to say we're better than somebody by blaming them. Yeah. And that, that, does no good what you know it still doesn't get you to move on then you're going to keep holding on to that person or that situation forever you're going to be in uh your well, don't blame your people don't take put the blame on yourself and 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 come up with a new solution right do something about yep do something about do it do something exactly. about you not them yes okay yes yep great way to end this and doug I, there's going to be some links down <laughs> below this blog there's going to be some links to some things that you're going to find out more from about you, Doug, and we're going to bring him back a couple of different times, and hopefully someday we'll talk him into doing a series for us. So uh, this is an introduction to Doug Wick, introduction to his philosophies, and folks, he's the real deal. Thank you. I wanted to come back and kind of sum this up, guys and gals. If you own an automotive repair shop and you're having problems hiring, recruiting, getting your how-to manuals in place, writing your SOPs, find the people that will work within your organization and follow your rules. Man, this is some great stuff. It all fits. Now, it's up to you what you're going to do with what you just heard. I'm going to add some links below this. And I want you to go to those links and say, okay, what can Doug Wick do for me? What is his thinking going to do? We're going to bring him back again, and then we're going to bring him back in a training format where you can plug in and learn about making change and changing the way you think, the way you feel, your thoughts as a leader, which could really elevate your business. And you could become a business owner and instead of just an employee within that business. So thank you all for being here. This is Showcase. We showcase things that it's going to help you become a better you. And when you become a better you, you become a better leader, an owner, a manager. That's the simplicity of what we do. Thank you all. Take care. Call me if you want to. 270-282-1262. Thank you so much. You take care, folks. Bye-bye. Like and subscribe to Auto Shop Showcase on YouTube and your favorite podcasting platform. Visit autoshopshowcase.com to sign up for monthly mentoring with Gary Gunn.